Hi crafty friends, it's Katya. Thank you for joining me today. I'm glad you're here. I can't wait to share with you this great idea I had about a quick way to color multiple die cuts at the same time without messing them up if they happen to be delicate and small dies like these. So these are the three cards that I'm going to share with you today. And I'm going to show you a quick way to color them very quickly and effectively without messing them up. And this is also a portable solution as well. So the first thing you're going to want to grab is some laminating sheets. You can do the heat laminating sheets that you already have in your stash if you have a laminator, or you can pick up these uh, one-sided laminating sheets that don't require a laminating machine. If you have a laminating machine at home, you can use that. Take two pieces of 80 pound cardstock, put that in the pouch, and run it through your laminating machine. The reason why you don't need to have one piece in there is because you don't need it laminated on both sides. You basically can just have two pieces ready to go at the same time and then just cut along the edges so that you have one side of each piece of cardstock that's completely laminated. So I already have some templates created, but I wanted to demonstrate this just to kind of give you an idea of what we're doing. So this piece is laminated, only one side of it, and I'm going to pick a die cut that I will want to like color multiple at the same time. And I'm demonstrating this with a very small die cut. So I'm grabbing it from this stylish oval Hello You floral die set from Spellbinders. And I'm just gonna take the little leaves that you see there and run this through my die cutting machine. Now, I had to pass this through several times because this is a super small die cut and I'm using a very small die cut machine, but this won't take you know several passes to go through. I think the larger the dies that you have, the easier it is. So I ran this leaf die cut through my die cut machine a couple of times. And initially you'd think, oh, I'm just gonna toss these because they're laminated leaves, but I want you to hang on to those because you will use them and I'll explain why in just a few minutes. So I ran the die cut twice on that one-sided laminated sheet that you see there of the cardstock, and I'm going to apply this low tack for delicate surface of purple tape. And the reason I want low tack is because I don't want my paper die cuts to stick to the tape. I want it to be able to come off very easily. So I flip that piece of laminated sheet over, and I'm applying this low tack tape to the back uh, not the laminated side, but the regular cardstock side. And I'm going to just trim off the edges there because I don't need that tape to be everywhere. And I'm going to use my non-stick stainless steel scissors here. Now here is an example of the same die set that I used from Spellbinders. And same concept, I cut out four flowers using the laminated piece of cardstock. And I kept the flowers that are also laminated because that way it will be easier for me to clean the stencil and allow me to quickly, you know, change colors if I want to. So these florals that I'm trying to put back in there with a little bit of struggle um, are laminated as well. You can see a little bit of shine that's on the screen there, but these are perfect because they will also help if you want to put them in your storage pocket and keep them with your dies so that you can um, use this again and again when you want to be able to cut a lot of dies and color them very quickly. And the reason I like this is because you can manipulate it around and move it around like I'm doing on the screen and it's super easy and it's portable. Now I used a bright pink color of dye ink for these flowers and because I put the laminated flowers back in the same place I can easily take a wet rag and wipe that off and basically this is ready to go again if I wanted to use a different color. So what I like about this template is that I can clean it off. It's really nice because I don't have to worry about saturating the paper with water and getting it really mucky after a time. And these flowers that pop right in there are super handy to keep just because they make easy cleaning of the template when you want to switch colors. I'm going to pull these off. And I was going to tell you too that when this tape starts to lose its stick, you can just simply pull it off and replace it. So it's easy peasy. So set these aside. And then I'm going to put these, which are just regular standard cardstock with no laminating on top of them. Put these in here. 
Sorry, somebody is texting me. I apologize. But I wanted to do this kind of live over uh, with audio um, to show you how nice it is to be able to take um, these brushes and ink up your uh, die cuts a little bit easier. And you can rotate the paper around so it's comfortable for you. So I'm using the color called Pucker Up by Catherine Pooler. And this is just a standard brush. I made sure that I got the excess ink off and I keep my color families together. So what I like about this is I can turn this to however I need to. And I'm gonna start pretty dark in the center. Wow, that's pretty in intense. It's an intense color. So the tape is just strong enough to keep it in the center and adhered, but when you wanna pull it off, it's easy because the tape is very, um, it's low tack, so it's nice. And you can just go all in circles. And as you blend, the ink will completely blend. These are fabulous inks and one of my favorites, but I will plan to branch out at some point and buy different colored inks um, from different manufacturers. And if you have a favorite, Drop that in the comments below so that I can go investigate. I'm kind of thinking about the Ulta New inks because I love their stamps and their products, but I think also Concord and Ninth is another favorite company of mine. Here's what I love about these brushes that I got off of Amazon, and I will link them in the description box below. They have a little handle in case you want to hang them up. I don't do that. I keep them in the original tube because I don't clean my brushes unless I'm switching colors. Then I can just put the cap on and they stay nice and clean and no ink gets in my drawer. Okay, so let's pull off these flowers. So I have these done and you can, you can imagine if you mass produce all of these, you can have so many of them colored in just fractions of time than if you actually do it and put it on another, you know, like a sticky mat, that sort of thing. I just like to be able to move this around and, you know, rotate these as I'm going. Now say these start to fade back and you want to add other colors, you can just put them right back in here and keep adding color. Now I'm going to put these back in here because I definitely do not want to clean this template while I have the exposed tape there and get something snagged and, you know, have, a, have it to replace it, uh, you know, sooner than I want to. So I'm basically going to put these back in their spots. And this takes just a little bit of time to put them back in. But they stick nicely because it's just bare paper on the back. And there we go. And I'll take the cloth that looks like somebody got injured because <laughs> of the color of the ink. But here you go. And it's nice and clean. And because I have this laminated cover on top, everything stays nice and clean for the next time and then like I said once this tape starts to lose its stick with your putting your die cuts in there you can just simply take off the painters tape or the low tack tape and replace it with two more pieces and you are good to go for the next round but now I can just keep even keep this whole thing in with my dies so that I am ready to go for the next time I want to color really quickly so here are some leaves that I cut out too. So same concept, laminated piece on top and the leaves that are laminated as well with the sticky tape on the back. And what I loved about this and why I positioned them this way is because say you're using a really large brush and you know that you want the tips of your leaves to be a lighter color and the base of them to be darker, you can take a green darker color and work in a circular motion and that way you're covering four leaves right at the same time instead of having to do multiple. Now if you wanted you could make this even larger than than this here. I think this is a this is a, about four and a quarter by four and a quarter. That's what fit my leaves and I didn't understand or even know if this concept would work but I was really pleasantly surprised to see that it did. Um, you just have to make sure you have a strong enough tape to hold them in place, a low tack tape. So I don't think that the um, easy tape, easy C tape, um, works really well in this application. I think you need to get a painter's tape to really make them hold down. Um, but the concept works really well. So I just went in a circle and let me just show you how I did these. 
I have some other flowers in here that I did, but this is how I put them in there. I actually put them in here, and um, the larger ones, and I colored them so that they were darker at the base and uh, lighter at the top, and just went around in a circular motion, and basically they all came out like this. Now these two here, I just put some gold accents because I plan on decorating my um, leaves and the flowers with that type of shine. And the same thing with these flowers is I did the same concept by putting them in the other floral die cut here. And they work, it works really, really well. Now you could have way more flowers than that. I think it's easier to color multiple ones at the same time than it is to color one by one. And I love the fact that this doesn't jump around on you and you can turn it around. You can actually even tape it if you're comfortable where it is. You can actually tape it to your work surface with painter's tape to get it off easily. Um, but I just love the fact that you're able to move it around in a way that suits you best. And I love the fact that it's easy for um, mass production and uh, lots of different colored flowers um, using that template. So I hope this part was helpful for you. In case I get asked just before um, we continue on, a lot of people will ask what this is for. This is for the measurement of the width and the length of the die plates that I use with this little mini uh, die cutting machine. And I wanted something a little bit larger. I have another one that's much smaller, but this one was great. But I always forget what the measurements are of the width that I can use. And then I wind up having to take my piece of paper and putting it on the die plates. But this just tells me I need to make sure it's not wider than three inches and not longer than six inches. So hopefully that will help. Typically when I work with dies that are this small, I generally like to put a piece of like double-sided adhesive on the back just to make them easier to work with. But I forgot to do that on this round, so I'm going to use some glue. And speaking of glue, I wanted to tell you about a, a product that is new to me that is not quite as expensive as most of the popular craft glues that are out there, and it is Elmer's glue all. Now this is not to be confused with regular standard Elmer's glue that the children use in school or at home. This is a stronger formula. So I've been testing this out for a while here and I wanted to tell you that I really, really like it. It works really well for my projects. It actually dries really quickly, which is true. Not super quick, like quick dry glues, but it has a stronger formula. And I have been noticing that this is really economical much less expensive than some of the other glues that I've been using. Um, and I just put that in a standard little squeeze bottle with a fine tip so that I can use it just like I do the other glues. But I wanted to point this out in case you are running out of glue and you want to try something, give this a try. I'll have a link to it in my description box below to, to make it easier for you to find. But you want to look for the words glue all. And I really love it, and it's uh, far less expensive than some of the other glues that I have tried, and I love them. They're just a little bit of a budget breaker sometimes, so this might be a good option for you. Okay, so I took some of this Elmer's glue all, and I put it into this little bottle with a fine tip point here, so it's easier to work with when I'm working with small die cuts. And I'm going to just demonstrate. It's just, it's super easy, obviously, to use your fine tip glue point tips when you are working with small die cuts. So like I said, I've just been really loving this glue. It's, like I said, it dries quickly and it's lived up to its name. I've been using it for about three, I wanna say three or four months now. And I think it works just like all of the other popular glues out there. The one thing I wish I would have done was kept the glue tip bottle for some of the other brands I had to f see if it would fit this particular um, top so that I could use that with small fine tip thing but it doesn't really matter so as you can see this is still drying a little bit but I really really love it and I wanted to mention it to you here in case you have a desire to give it a try yourself so off screen I assembled all of my cards. I didn't document that process because this was pretty much to show you the template that you can make to color your die cuts quickly. So this card has a lot of dimension. It's something that I will hand deliver. I think it would cost a lot of extra postage because of all the die cuts that I have stacked on top of each other for dimension. But how I created this envelope was using the envelope or envelope punch board from We Are Memory Keepers. And all I did was use the gift card size that I'm showing here. So basically 
paper size is five by five and scoring at two inches. And I thought that was really fun. And then I made a gold liner to coincide of it. And then I stamped that you are my favorite from this pink paisley auburn lane stamp set that i got at tuesday morning which is no longer in business around my area and here is the second one same thing i used the envelope punch board from we are memory keepers to make that envelope and used a paper napkin to put on the inside and then i also created this on canva the one that says happy mother's day mom and I did that on clear acetate and I thought it would be fun to try something a little bit different. And then I secured it with the leaf on top of it to make it stay there. And then I just put an extra die cut on the inside and put my favorite labels on the back because I do not enjoy stamping made by Katia on the back of my cards. I prefer to have labels that I designed. And then here is the final card, which is a five by seven, a lot bigger. And I used an Anna Griffin die cut for the back and I just used a tone on tone. And for the bow, I used my gold paper cardstock that I had in my stash and used the bow that's from the Spellbinders die kit. And I used some gold baubles. And then for the wrap around the bouquet, I, I fussy cut this whole thing and designed it and played around with it. And after all that work, I thought, you know what, I might as well just make a template of it, out of it. So I made the, the one out of the um, cardstock there, and then I just traced it onto a piece of paper, laminated it, and then uh, cut around it so that I can keep it for future use. So there are the final three cards. I hope the template situation is something you would consider. Um, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, and please share this video if you think it would be helpful to somebody else. And thanks for watching, and ciao for now.